Hi! Today's book is called Wiggling Worms at Work by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Steve Jenkins. This is a nonfiction book. It's an informational book that will teach you facts about earthworms. And I was very inspired to read this book by this book, Tilly and the Wall. And this is a fiction book. It is imagined by Leo Leone. And the worm is one of the minor characters in this book. But the worm is the major character in this real book. Wiggling Worms at Work. Wiggling Worms at Work. Wiggling Worms at Work by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Steve Jenkins. And that is the title page. Down in the ground, under your feet, thousands of worms wiggle around flower bulbs and tunnel under trees. They twist and turn, eating almost anything in their way. These wiggling worms are at work. Farmers plow their fields to loosen the soil. Crumbly soil lets the roots of plants spread out and grow. Worms also loosen the soil as they wiggle along. They are called nature's plows. As worms twist and turn, they push aside loose soil. This creates tunnels. Air flows along these tunnels. Rainwater trickles down. Roots drink it up. Moist ground helps plants grow better. Worms tunnel in hard packed soil by swallowing it. The soil goes in the worm's mouth, slides into the crop, then passes down to the gizzard. Those are different parts of the worm's body. Mouth, crop, and gizzard. Worms do not have teeth, muscles, fine grains of sand, and small stones in the gizzard grind the soil. Worms digest leaf and plant bits that are found in soil, just as you digest a salad. What's left passes through a worm's body and comes out of its tail end in the form of pellets called worm castings. These castings make good plant food. They help fruits and vegetables grow bigger and better. Sometimes worms crawl above ground. When they tunnel back down into the ground, they pull dead leaves and plants down with them. These plants make the soil better as they rot. Seeds come down too. Some of these seeds send out roots. Seedlings sprout. Worms help new plants begin to grow. Worms can wiggle, twist, turn, and even tie themselves in knots because they have no backbones. Their soft bodies are made of rings or segments. These segments act like the coils on a slinky toy. They let a worm bend. A worm has no legs, but eight bristles under each segment act a little like legs. They help a worm move. Strong muscles allow the worm to stretch out its front end. It becomes long and thin. Then the worm fastens its front bristles to the soil. The back end slinks up, making the worm short and fat. Have you ever played with a slinky?
The worm wiggles along, stretching and slinking, stretching and slinking. With all its wiggling, twisting and turning, it's a wonder a worm knows where it's headed. It has no eyes, no nose, no ears, and hardly a brain at all. But a worm knows what's happening nearby. It feels vibrations on the ground and senses a hungry robin. Quickly, the worm slips back into its burrow. Hiding is the only way it can protect itself from enemies. Worms also hide from the sun. They must live in damp soil since they breathe air through their moist skin. In the hot sun, their skins dry up and they can't breathe. Sometimes worms crawl to the surface to find food. They select dead and decaying plants to drag back to their burrows. These plants contain bacteria that worms eat. Healthy plants do not. Worms pick leaves with pointed ends rather than round ones. No one knows why. Worms also eat fungi and mold. They slurp the hair-like strands of mold the same way you might slurp strands of spaghetti. You can really see the artwork here too. And even though this artwork is created by the artist, it still is a factual book. Worms eat at the entrance of their burrows. Then each worm covers any leftover plants with its castings. This pile of worm castings is called a midden. It hides the top of the worm's burrow and acts like a door to keep out bad weather and rain. This is a long book, you're being a great listener. In spring, before the weather warms, worms wiggle to the surface to mate. Worms are different from most other animals. Each worm is both male and female, but each one still needs a mate. After mating, each worm crawls back into its burrow. When the weather cools, a ring-like cocoon forms near the head of each worm that has mated. Slowly, the worm begins to move backwards. The cocoon inches forward on the worm's body, just as a ring on your finger would move. The cocoon passes over openings in the worm's body. Up to 30 eggs slip out of the openings and into the cocoon. In a few minutes, the cocoon slips off the worm's head, just as the ring would slip off your finger. The ends of the cocoon close. Inside the cocoon, the eggs are fertilized. In about three weeks, the eggs hatch. Out of about 30 eggs, only three or four wormlets emerge from each cocoon. They look like tiny pieces of cotton thread, less than an inch long. But they are fully developed worms and live completely on their own. They do not need their parents' help. The wormlets inch along, finding bits of dead plants to eat, dragging them into their tunnels, and covering any leftovers with their castings. They wiggle underground, loosening the soil and making tunnels. Even tiny wormlets help the soil. These babies grow fast. In six weeks, they are adult worms. In winter, the soil near the surface freezes. The worms plug up their tunnels and move down to warmer soil. They stay there until spring. Then they wiggle up, tunneling, twisting, and turning until they're right under your feet again. And of course, we call that hibernation. Vegetables and flowers grow better, trees grow better, grass grows greener because there are thousands of wiggling worms at work.
I'll bet you knew, never knew they were so interesting, right? Thanks for listening.